Hey guys, Roman here from Tech Guides, and this is my ultimate step-by-step -step guide on how to upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11. So in today's video, I will walk you through everything you need to know if you want to do a fresh install of Windows 11. Now, when it comes to upgrading Windows, I would always recommend to do a full a fresh install of the new version that came out, because if you simply follow the regular upgrade procedure that is offered within Windows itself, then sometimes some tools might not work flat out. You might have some weird performance issues and generally from time to time it's always a good idea to just start off fresh and making sure that you won't have to deal with any weird issues that might develop down the road. Now with Windows 10 being end of life in October 2025, I thought it would be a good point of time to actually show you guys my personal upgrade procedure. So I will walk you through each and every step that I did in order to move from Windows 10 to Windows 11, including all of the backups that I had to take account for, how I extracted my Windows key, how I generated a Windows 11 installation medium on a USB drive, which makes the installation extremely fast, and then also step-by-step step, the installation procedure, what can go wrong, where you actually have to be a little bit careful what you click. And then I'm also going to show you some issues that I ran into while installing Windows 11, such that for you, this procedure will hopefully be a little bit less painful. Now, before we start, let's make sure that your system is actually compatible with Windows 11. To check this, click on the start menu and go to Windows Update. Here you should now see the Windows 11 version 23H2 or whatever version is currently uh, the latest version is ready and there would also be a download and install button. On the other hand, don't worry if you get this message saying that your PC currently doesn't meet the minimum requirements for Windows 11. If this is the case, click on start menu, search for PC health check, open this application and click on check system now. As you can see in my case, the CPU that I'm using on this system is not yet supported by Windows 11. However, I should note that even though according to this list, my CPU is actually not supported by Windows 11, it still runs perfectly fine without any issues. Of course, your mileage may vary, but only because your model isn't listed in this list doesn't really mean that Windows 11 is flat out not going to run at all. Besides that, the PC Health Check also complains that the TPM2 module isn't currently enabled or installed. Now on pretty much any more or less modern motherboard, you really should have the option to enable TPM through the BIOS. So what you should do at this point is to restart your system, press delete or whatever button is required to enter the BIOS, and then look for an option called Intel Platform Trust Technology or PTT and enable that option. Once you've done that and you reopen the PC Health Check, you can see that the message regarding TPM 2.0 has disappeared and you're now able to actually install Windows 11 on that system. Now, before we can actually move on to installing Windows 11 on our machine, we have to make sure that we do a proper backup of our system. One way to make sure that all of your personal file as well as software settings are backed up is to simply go to the C drive, open the users folder and then copying your user folder from your C drive onto a completely different drive. Now I know that this can take quite some time if you've been using Windows 10 for a while now. I guess it can take upwards of two hours to do this backup procedure of your home folder. However, this is one of the easiest way to make sure that you have both your personal files and software settings backed up from your old system. On the other hand, there are certain types of customizations such as keyboard shortcuts that are unfortunately not stored in your home directory. And for those, unfortunately, you have to go through each and every program that you're using and exporting these uh, very user-specific customizations from that tool onto another hard drive so that you can re-import it later once you have installed Windows 11. So one software where this applies for me would be DaVinci Resolve, where you can go to DaVinci Resolve, Keyboard Customizations, and then export your custom keyboard shortcuts into a file. Now, if you're a bit afraid of this upgrading procedure and if you have a bit of money to spare, then of course you could simply buy a new NVMe SSD uh, on which you will then install Windows 11 on and you will actually keep your old SSD that had Windows 10. Uh, you have to make sure to actually take it out of your system. This is something that I actually ran into with my Windows 11 installation. And when you then realize that you have all of your settings, you have all of your files, you can move on to delete the files on the old drive. 
Lastly, also make sure to back up all of the activation keys for relevant software. For instance, Windows obviously also needs an activation key if you're doing a fresh install. And therefore, now I'm going to show you how to actually extract the Windows 10 activation key from the running operating system such that you can actually use this key on Windows 11. For this, I like to use the magical Jelly Bean Key Finder application, which you can download from this link. Yes, this tool does look kind of fishy, but you can simply open it up and it will show you your Windows CD key. You can even export the key and move it onto another drive. However, I would recommend to take a image of the key with your mobile phone, such that you can very easily enter your Windows key during the installation procedure. And the last preparation step before we can actually move into actually installing Windows 11 is to generate a Windows 11 installation medium. Personally, I like to use one of these tiny, tiny flash drives that are actually USB 3 because they make the installation procedure of Windows 11 extremely fast. Next, go to this website where you can download the Create Windows 11 installation media software directly from Microsoft. Once downloaded, make sure that your USB flash drive is connected and execute the software to create a Windows 11 installation medium. On this screen, you want to select Use the recommended settings, select USB flash drive, and double check whether the appropriate device is selected. In my case, I have used this flash drive to install a previous version of Windows 10, which is why there is some stuff on there. However, everything obviously is going to get erased once you click Next. And with that, you successfully completed all the preparatory steps. You can reboot your system and boot into the installer on your USB flash drive. For this, wait for the post screen and hit the key referred to boot menu. Next, look for your flash drive, which in my case is called SanDisk. Now, the next screen is actually quite an important one as it allows you to select both the language of Windows and also the time and currency format. Now, if you select English World, then Windows is actually not going to install any of the bloatware that Windows comes with and it's going to give you the cleanest installation possible. So definitely select time and currency format English World instead of actually the one that you would use and select the keyboard layout that you're using. Next, enter your Windows CD key that you extracted using the magical Jelly Bean Key Finder and hit Next. Accept the Microsoft Software License Terms and select the customized install. On this screen, you can select the drive onto which you want to install Windows 11. As the Windows installer itself will set up the recovery partitions as well as the primary partition and the reserve partitions, you actually have to delete all of the old partitions from your old Windows 10 installation in order to continue. Quick word of caution, before you actually format any drives, absolutely make sure that this is not a drive that has any data on it that you still want to keep. Obviously, formatting will erase any data from your drives, so you have to be absolutely certain that the drive number that you selected is one that you no longer need. After you've deleted all the old partitions, click on Unallocated Space and hit Next. And with that, I've actually hit my first roadblock during the installation of Windows 11 with this strange error message about not being able to boot into the Windows installer into the next phase or something like that. Um, now, if you actually Google for this error, you will actually find a few quite dangerous suggestions what you should do. But in reality, the solution to this problem is pretty trivial. So the problem is that on some of the other drives that I still had in my system, there were bootloaders installed for previous versions of Windows. So like Windows 7, probably one of them or another version of Windows 10. And this actually interferes with the installation procedure of the new operating system. So for me, the solution to this problem was pretty simple, but also quite annoying. And that was that I just unplugged every other hard drive from the system. So all my NVMe SSDs, as well as all my regular spinning hard drives and made sure that the only drive remaining in the system was the one where I actually wanted to install Windows on. Et voila, as you can see, the installation proceeded just fine. After Windows has successfully installed, you'll have to reboot the system um, and make sure to actually unplug the USB drive. So instead of simply going back into the installation procedure, the system will actually boot into the freshly installed Windows 11 version. And now you have to be a little bit patient because the system is trying to connect the online services from Microsoft. 
Now, because we selected English World in the regen selection during the installation procedure, there will appear an error just like this that tells you that something went wrong um, and the error code is OOBE Region. But don't worry about this, you can simply click on Skip and Windows will normally continue the installation procedure. Next, select your keyboard layout and provide a name for this system. In the next step, Windows is going to attempt to connect to the Internet. However, in some cases, you simply are not able to connect to the Internet at this stage. And actually, I might even recommend you to not connect to the Internet on purpose in order to actually skip being forced to log in with your Microsoft account. So without internet connection, what you have to do here is to simply press Shift F10 and enter the command OOBE backslash bypass NRO. When you press enter, the system will reboot. And as you can see, you can now actually proceed the installation procedure by clicking on I don't have an internet connection. Next, click on continue with limited setup and enter your username, password and password recovery information. On the other hand, if a internet connection was successfully established, you can see that the installer is going to force you to actually log in to your Microsoft account. It is no longer possible, as far as I know at this stage, to actually continue with the installation procedure without logging in. Personally, I found this quite frustrating because I host all of the cloud solutions that Microsoft provides myself and therefore have no need for their solutions. On the other hand, if you simply want to migrate from an old device to a new device and you don't care about Microsoft having access to all of your personal data, then logging in here is actually a good thing because you can let Windows restore all of your apps, all of your settings and also all of your browser credentials back onto the system from your previous system if you also logged in into your Microsoft account there. Next, create a pin for your device and that concludes the installation procedure of Windows 11. In this final part, I'd like to talk about the kind of annoying linking of the Microsoft account to your uh, Windows machine, uh, which is kind of enforced during the installation and how you can actually unlink your Microsoft account um, from your system such that you have just a general local account which is not synced to some cloud and that you also don't have all of your personal files being synced into the OneDrive. So here's how to fix those two problems. To use a local account instead of the Microsoft account, go to the Start menu, click on your username and click on Change Account Settings. Here under Account Settings, you can select Sign in with a local account instead. You can provide a new password, then Windows will just log you out quickly. You can log back in and that's it, you're now logged in with your local account. To unlink OneDrive, simply right click on the OneDrive logo in the bottom right corner of your screen, click on Settings, go to Sync and Backup, click on Manage Backup and unselect all the folders that you see right here. Click on Save Changes and once you've done that, you can see that your Documents folder now is no longer within the OneDrive folder and instead is located under C Users, your username, Documents. And with that, I really hope that you've also been successful in upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11. If you still have any questions or issues, then don't hesitate to leave them down in the comments and hopefully me or one of my community members is going to be able to help you out with your issue. Now, if you're interested in the exact performance that you can expect when doing productivity tasks in Windows 11 compared to Windows 10, then click on this video here where I'm going into a deep dive of the performance of DaVinci Resolve, um, the Affinity uh, products, uh, Handbrake, as well as a few other uh, benchmarking tools that should hopefully give you a good impression whether or not you can see higher or low performance on Windows 11 compared to Windows 10.